It is important for everyone to know how to use an EpiPen, but it is especially important for nurses to know how to use one. In this video today, I'm going to show you exactly how EpiPens work. And they're really much more straightforward than you think. They look very mystifying coming in these plastic containers and you have to pull certain tabs, but we are going to go through exactly how an EpiPen works and practice these skills using a trainer EpiPen. Let's first talk about when to use an EpiPen. An EpiPen is used in the case of a severe or life-threatening emergency to a type one allergic reaction. This includes includes anaphylaxis, severe reaction to allergens, idiopathic and exercise-induced anaphylaxis, and in any patients who have a history of having a life-threatening or severe allergic reaction. There's also no absolute contraindication for using epinephrine for an anaphylactic reaction. This means that you do not have to worry about trying something else first. If a person is an anaphylaxis, immediately administer the EpiPen. It's also worth noting that as many as 20% of patients will end up needing a second dose of epinephrine. So if you're carrying an EpiPen, make sure you carry two. And if you need to administer the EpiPen for someone, make sure you know where the second EpiPen is as well. And as always, if you do have to use an EpiPen, make sure the patient gets to a hospital for further evaluation. Let's talk about the dosing of an EpiPen. An EpiPen comes in this normal adult dose, which is the yellow EpiPen, and this is 0.3 milligrams of epinephrine. There's also a smaller EpiPen that is green, that is the EpiPen Junior. This has half the dose of epinephrine in it, or 0.15 milligrams. If your patient is between 15 and 30 kilos, you will use the EpiPen Junior with a half a dose. And if your patient is above 30 kilos, you will just use the normal adult's EpiPen. Let's talk about how the EpiPen works. It is really, really simple. The EpiPen comes in a plastic container. To open this, you simply flip up the top cap. Now, there's really only one more step that you need to do to actually use your EpiPen. That step is removing this blue cap at the top. This is a safety feature to make sure that your EpiPen doesn't accidentally discharge if you're not ready to use it. So to use it, you would remove this cap at the top. And to show you that, I'm going to use our trainer EpiPen. It looks almost the exact same, but there's no needle and no medication inside. So to use this, we simply remove the top blue safety piece and you would never do this in real life, but so you can see, I will show you on my hand. As you press down, the medication goes in, you hear a click, you'll wait 10 seconds to make sure all of the medication goes in and you'll see that the medication is entered because hopefully your patient starts to improve and also the needle will slide down. Now, per the manufacturer's instructions, there is only one place that you can administer any EpiPen, and that is in the anterior lateral aspect of the upper thigh. So that would be the top side part of a thigh. If you're administering this on yourself, the diagram on the EpiPen shows the figure holding their arm straight out and swinging the medication into their thigh. Again, it's important that you leave the EpiPen in place for 10 seconds to make sure that all of the medication is administered. While the manufacturer suggests a swinging motion if you're doing this to yourself, if you're doing this on a patient or a friend or your child, I would highly encourage that you have your patient sit down and then administer the EpiPen in that upper side portion of their thigh. You can see here that I am demonstrating both ways of administering an EpiPen. The first is the swinging motion on myself, again, being sure to hold the EpiPen in place for 10 seconds. And the second, which I'm also doing on myself, is demonstrating how you would administer an EpiPen on someone else. After you've administered the EpiPen, it is important that your patient get to the hospital for further evaluation. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a like and also consider subscribing to my channel to not miss out on any nursing content from me in the future.